name's Commander Tom Stocko. I'm the commander of the 2nd District. For those of you that don't know me, welcome to the 2019 2nd District Community Relations uh, Award Ceremony. Um, really, this is uh, my favorite award. This is uh, an opportunity uh, for myself, I know for the chief and the mayor, um, to recognize the officers and the citizens that make a huge contribution to the 2nd District and to the 2nd District community. So. Um, uh, for those of you that are here uh, receiving an award, congratulations. Um, we're going to hear a little bit about what you did uh, and say thank you for what you did. Uh, for your loved ones that are here, um, thank you for coming. You're going to hear uh, some heroic tales. You're going to hear some uh, uh, stories of your loved ones who went over and above and out of their way uh, to make a difference in the community. Um, and I know you appreciate what, what they do, and now you get to hear how we appreciate what they do every day. Um, uh, from the start, I'd like to acknowledge some of the folks that are here. Um, to my right, some of the dignitaries. First, everyone knows Chief Calvin Williams, the Honorable Mayor Frank G. Jackson, uh, Grady Stevenson, the Director of uh, Community Relations, uh, Council President Kevin Kelly, and uh, Deputy Chief Joellen O'Neill. Um, a couple of the other council people are on their way, and we'll introduce them as they, as they get here. So, um, at our uh, weekly, I'm sorry, monthly community relations committee meeting, we always start with the Pledge of Allegiance. So I'm going to ask everyone to stand up and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, I would now like to invite uh, Pastor Grady Stevenson uh, for the invocation. Thank you, Commander. Let us pause and bow. God, our Father, creator of all mankind, we thank you and we give you praise for this day. For this is a day that you have made, Lord, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We shall look to you, for you are the author and the finisher of our faith. You are a God who covers and protects us at all times. Father, we thank you for this gathering of your men and women today. As we begin to celebrate, we invite you to be the invited guests in this house. And so, Father, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this gathering of great men and women. Thank you for this community. Thank you for our mayor, our chief, our commander, and everyone that serves under his command. We thank you and we give you praise for this day, our life, our health, and our strength. In your son Jesus' name, thank God and amen. Thank you, Pastor Stevenson. Um, now for a few words, uh, the chief of police of the city of Cleveland, Calvin Williams. Thanks, Commander. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How's everybody doing? Good, good. I want to start off by uh, congratulating our award recipients, our police officers, our citizens. Thank you, thank you, thank you for what you do for us day in and day out. Uh, as the Commander stated early on, you know, these are the, the times that I definitely enjoy. Uh, when we come together to actually talk about and heap a lot of praise uh, on the folks that do the job day in and day out. You know, when I'm out there walking around talking to folks, you know, people always thank me. Hey, Chief, thank you. You guys are doing a great job. And my response is, yes, they're doing a great job. Thank them. When you see a police officer out there, thank them. Uh, because this division, I know I talk about this a lot, that I want us to be the best in the country, and I think we're getting there. Uh, I think we are really getting there. We're really close to being the best in the country. And I think every officer that wears this badge and this patch wants to be the same. So congratulations, family members. Thank you for loaning them to us. I know it's tough sometimes. There's a lot that goes on, a lot of conflicts with family schedules. But thank you guys for entrusting them to us. And, uh, you know, we do everything possible to bring them home safe. So congratulations and thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Williams. Uh, now I'd like to introduce to you the Executive Director of the Community Relations Board, Grady Stevens. Thank you again, Commander. Um, tonight I'd just like to um, thank all of you, all of you, the, the officers that serve 
and again, like the chief said, the families that, that serve alongside the officers. Um, I know that you have a, a, a difficult job, but you do a, a fantastic job in helping to keep us safe here and making this city a place where people want to live, work, and enjoy. And so um, I'd just like to say thank you. I'd like to recognize a couple of people. I have a couple of board members that are here tonight that, that serve in the second district. So Waverly Willis, one of our board members, thank you. To uh, one of our newest board members, Luis Gonzalez, thank you for being here. And before I take my seat, I'd like to give a special thanks to our second district rep. I know you all love him a lot because he's out here always doing a fantastic job. Michael McDonald, thank you so much for the work that you do. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Director Stevenson. So uh, uh, in addition to the awards that uh, the city voted on uh, for the officers and, and some of the awards that, that I myself as commander of the second district bestow upon uh, uh, you officers and your loved ones, um, uh, our council people, um, we have honestly, in my opinion, five of the finest council people that represent the second district, um, finer than, than any across the, uh, uh, the, the city. And uh, this is going to be on Channel 20, and some of them might take umbrage with that. But I, I really have to tell you, um, the relationship that I have, the relationship that our officers have with our council people is really special. Um, they're as invested in our community as we are. Um, we share the same goals. Um, uh, we share a lot of the same resources. We share a lot of the same information. We're really fortunate uh, to be represented by these five really fine individuals. Um, uh, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Ward 3 Councilman Kerry McCormick. Thank you and good evening. And Commander, thank you for all the hard work you do on a daily basis, taking my calls, harassment, all of that. We appreciate it. Um, first, just want to say thank you to all of our officers that are here tonight um, that do the day-to-day -day work to protect the communities that we represent. Um, as many folks uh, have seen, um, there's a lot of good things happening in the city of Cleveland. I have the pleasure and privilege of representing downtown Ohio City, Tremont, a part of the Stockyards neighborhood. We're working very hard to bring back the city of Cleveland, to uh, bring in new small businesses, to bring in more residents into the city of Cleveland, and to support the growth of our city. There is no way, whether it is the 101-year-old woman on West 48th Street in Ohio City, or the person that just moved into a new apartment downtown, that we could do that without the support and dedication of the Cleveland Division of Police in the second district. So thank you so much, not only for the day-to-day -day that you do and the sacrifice, but for being a part of the bigger picture here in the city of Cleveland uh, and being a critical, critical part of that to ensure that we have safe and welcoming neighborhoods. So I want to thank you for that. Um, so I'm, I would like to recognize uh, two officers uh, tonight. Um, the one was difficult because he was the one emailing me about who are going to be the two officers that you're going to recognize. Uh, so I had to get a little sneaky with it. Um, but the fir first, oh no, I shouldn't adjust this, I guess. Hello. Um, maybe I can yell. What do we think? All right, yeah, there you go. There we go. All right, we're back on. All right. Uh, um, the first one, uh, Lieutenant Michael Bentley, um, wanted to recognize him. Um, you know, uh, Lieutenant Bentley is, is also one of those guys that we call on um, all the time for important information. It is incredible. I thought that I was the block club aficionado going to uh, more block clubs than anyone would ever want to go to, but I think uh, Lieutenant has me beat now. From day one uh, that he and I got to know each other, uh, both when I was working in the community and then as a council person, uh, he goes above and beyond every single day uh, to be there for our community members to make sure that they're getting the information they needed. Uh, when he's not working, he's answering his phone, which I yell at him about. Uh, you're not working, you're not on the job, stop answering our calls, but he does it anyway. Um, it is true, it is clear as day that in his heart and his soul, he cares about our community, he cares about our city neighborhoods. And that comes over uh, loud and clear to our community and to our residents. Uh, and he really helps to lead our, our community service uh, unit officers in the second district, uh, which we have a great group of. I always yell at the commander because every time you know, our community falls in love with a CSU officer, they get uh, promoted, which is good for them. But, but anyways, Lieutenant Bentley, uh, for your dedication, uh, for your heartfelt concern for our neighborhoods, and for our community, I want to thank you and recognize you here on behalf of the residents of Ward 3. 
All right, we'll bring you up at the same time, I guess, Commander? Yes? Yeah, yeah. yeah bring them up with Pat. Okay. Uh, the second person uh, I wanted... Second person I wanted to introduce tonight, or uh, recognize is uh, Detective Janet Murphy. Uh, Detective Murphy is one of those folks that I've had the uh, pleasure of uh, working with on the, for the past three and a half years. Uh, Detective Murphy is one of those folks that is not on the front lines. Uh, she's not a person that is uh, getting recognition or getting credit or really uh, uh, known to many people in the community. Um, but without her work, without her diligence, in ensuring that crimes within our community are followed up on, going above and beyond to use technology, to use her contacts in the community, to ensure that when our officers do great work, that that crime is followed up on, and that our residents know that people like her are in the department uh, every single day, ensuring that, uh, that folks that are committing crime in our community come to justice. Detective Murphy, again, not a person on the front line, but so critically important in the second district and to our community uh, to ensure that we remain safe uh, and that things get followed up on. So to Detective Murphy, really, uh, for your diligence and for uh, your, your passion to go above and beyond to ensure that uh, we keep safe communities, want to recognize her as well. So if you, want to, if you both come up now. Oh, there she is. I wonder where she will. Thank you, Councilman McCormick. Uh, now I'd like to introduce Ward 12 Councilman Tony Brancatelli. He's so tall in this group. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, what a great day to be here. And as uh, the Councilman mentioned, we, we have a number of stops throughout our days, uh, but nothing is more important than tonight uh, to be able to recognize all these folks for the great work that they do. And I'm really honored that uh, when I look at the 2nd District and I look at um, when we talk about folks who are going above and beyond, those folks who return their calls, they, they go out and do the residence, whether it's um, a crime spree like the Atkins or whether it's a barking dog or a complaint about a neighbor who's driving his car over the tree lawn and mucking up the neighborhood. Um, the, re the officers really go out and, and speak to the residents and really make a difference in really uh, supporting kind of the day-to-day -day stuff that we do. And, um, I, I can't say enough about how well deserved all these folks are tonight in getting our awards and getting a recognition. And we have a couple in uh, Ward 12. Um, but I was warned by Council President Kelly, don't have more awards than he has. So I, can, I, I could have put 50 officers down here, but the uh, Council President said no. You, you can only get a couple and you can't pass Councilman McCormick. So we have a couple of officers, Lieutenant Johnny Hamm and Sergeant Patrick McLean. I want to acknowledge the great work that they've done and the great work that they continue to do in our community and really bringing a, a lot of pride for, for those officers and making a difference in our community. I want to thank them for all their great surface, service and, uh, and thank them for being out there every day today. So um, thank you very much. Congratulations, guys, and thank you, Councilman Brancatelli. Uh, now I'd like to call up Ward 3 Councilman and Council President Kevin Kelly. Well, 
Ward 3, Ward 13, oh, it's, all, three? it's all the same. Ward 13, <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. My feelings aren't hurt. Um, thank you. Thanks for being here tonight, and uh, thanks for taking a few minutes to listen to us. And, uh, and again, this is a very important night for all of us to really honor those who, who work to give their lives to protect us. And uh, I want to thank the officer of the 2nd District for giving me what I take for granted, and from what I understand a lot of neighborhoods don't have. Um, I want to thank you for living in a neighborhood where my child's friends ride their bikes over and knock on the door to see if she can come out and play, uh, where I can open the door and, and let my kids play without worrying, that we have uh, a neighborhood that I consider safe, and uh, in a place where I live in a neighborhood where I'm going to retire from, and I'm happy to have raised my kids in there because I know that we live in a very a safe community, a thriving community, and it's thanks to the men and women in this, in this room that that is the case. Um, however, as we all know, the world is not a perfect place, um, and sometimes tragedy does happen and, and bad things do happen, and, and all too often, people look for those to blame. Who do you point the fingers at? And, you know, the, the, recently we've had, you know, the, over the summer we had a tragedy that took place at the, at the library. And um, the first thing that happened was people would start pointing fingers. Um, and, you know, who is to blame, who failed, who didn't. And let a day pass or so and you look and people actually did what they were supposed to do. People acted the way they were supposed to do. And the men and women of the 2nd District, when there was a shooting, uh, working with the library, had the case solved, had, the, had an arrest made within six days. So that is a pretty tremendous response because there was a, one victim was in the hospital and the shooter was on the run. So the, uh, I want to, want to spend tonight, I want to really take a minute to thank the major crime, detect, major crime detectives for all the work that they did to solve this and other crimes like this. We don't hear about the good work that's done. We don't hear when there's a tragedy, you don't hear about the great work that happens to solve that crime so it doesn't happen again to somebody else. But I want to make sure everybody in this room knows that I know what you've done, and I appreciate it, and I thank you for it. So I want to um, thank the major crime detectives, and I also, as I mentioned before, um, the quality of life, the day-to-day, -day, what you all do to keep, um, to keep my community safe, our community safe. I want to thank, we've had, uh, well, not, forget the number of years we've done our bike patrols, but there's, uh, there are uh, two, two officers that are there for every single one of them. That's uh, Patrol Officer David Wright and Patrol Officer David Tram. I want to honor them tonight for just having that presence in the community, making sure that everybody feels that the police are there for them. And uh, I also, as I mentioned before, in terms of the major crimes detectives, I want to honor uh, Lieutenant Larry Russell, Sergeant Patrick Becca, Detective Norman, Robert Norman, Detective Corey Evans, Detective Thomas Cloak, and that's all. So if you could please come up, appreciate it. Turn 
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Council President Kelly, from Ward 13. Uh, so now, uh, our next honor, uh, uh, honoree um, uh, is uh, Councilwoman Jasmine Santana from Ward 14. Unfortunately, uh, Councilwoman Santana couldn't make it tonight, and she sent her regrets. Um, and she, she asked me to present uh, her awards on her behalf. Um, so I'm going to do that. Uh, so the first two uh, folks that we're going to recognize on behalf of uh, Councilwoman Santana, and if these two folks could uh, come forward, Lieutenant Michael Batley and Sergeant uh, Patrick McLean. So I, I wish I had uh, tape recorded what, what Councilman McCormick said, because he really was very eloquent when he described uh, uh, Lieutenant Batley. Lieutenant Batley, for those of you that, that don't know, uh, is the administrative officer in the second district. He's really my right-hand man. Uh, not only that, he's uh, one of my dearest friends in the world, um, and uh, uh, we've gone through a lot of wars together, uh, really, to, to battle to make the second district what it is today. Um, I can't say enough, and I know Councilwoman Santana can't say enough, and uh, she was really effusive when she was speaking with me on the phone uh, just before the ceremony uh, and wanted me to really emphasize uh, what a wonderful job Lieutenant Batley and Sergeant McLean do um, for the Ward 14 community. Um, they're at every meeting uh, in the ward. Um, they're responsive to uh, citizen complaints. They're responsive to her complaints and her concerns. And uh, uh, she really, I can't thank them enough. And uh, like uh, Councilman Brancatelli said, like Councilman McCormick said, uh, these guys answer the phone um, when they're off duty. These guys answer the phone when they're on duty and in the middle of something if they see Councilman Santana calling. So um, uh, really, they're the, heart, they're the heart and soul along with the rest of our officers of the 2nd District, and uh, she wanted to thank them. So Lieutenant Betley and Sergeant McLean. All right, and she wasn't done. Uh, so I'd like to now invite the uh, members of the 2nd District Vice Unit forward, um, led by Sergeant Frank Wyma, Detective Larry Smith, Detective William Salupo, Jr., Detective John Graves, who I knew couldn't be here tonight, uh, Detective David Santiago, Jr., Detective Michael Rinkus, Detective William Mazur, who I know couldn't be here tonight, and Detective Scott Sistek, if you uh, gentlemen can step forward. Um, again, uh, Councilman Santana uh, wishes she could have been here, and, and uh, she really had a, a, a soft uh, spot in her heart for our second district vice unit. Um, you know, they're responsible for the entire district, um, and they're responsive to each and every one of our council people and to our community. Uh, but Councilwoman Santana had uh, some real issues um, in some pockets of her of her ward um, this summer, and uh, specifically right uh, uh, not far from here, over by St. Rocco's Church, and. Um, uh, uh, she laid out um, a lot of information that was presented to her um, at community meetings uh, confidentially from some of her uh, constituents, uh, and it really painted a dire picture of what was going on in a neighborhood uh, that was really being besieged by uh, hoodlums and thugs, honestly. Um, the vice unit, again, under the tutelage of, of Sergeant Oima, uh, went in, uh, did a lot of surveillance. Uh, they used a lot of their sources, confidential uh, informants. I know uh, Detective Larry Smith is, is the king of, uh, of, of sources. Um, uh, they worked that case. Um, they were able to go in. Uh, they made a number of arrests. They boarded up a number of houses. Um, they seized uh, automatic firearms. They seized, seized cash, and they seized, seized large quantities of narcotics. Um, really, these guys did a wonderful job, and uh, I, I think uh, uh, each of the council people probably could have fought over who was going to recognize these guys uh, because they're that valuable uh, to the second district. So uh, on behalf of uh, Councilwoman Santana, um, second district vice unit, thanks for what you do.
It's like a boy band. We boys were all out. All right, and finally, um, uh, Ward 15 Councilman uh, Matt Zone. Um, uh, Matt's also the, the head of the Public Safety Committee. He's the chair. Um, unfortunately, he could not be here tonight either. Um, uh, Councilman Zone, for those of you that don't know, serves on the Board of Directors for the National League of Cities, um, and he's also that organization's immediate past president, uh, which is a, a pretty prestigious uh, uh, recognition for him. I know he was very proud of it, um, of, of, of holding that. He's currently in Chicago again, sends his regrets that he couldn't be here. Um, representing him, though, uh, ably, is uh, Jeremy Taylor. Jeremy um, uh, works for the uh, 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 he's a safety and community engagement officer, I'm sorry, uh, coordinator for the Detroit Shoreway uh, Community Development Organization. So, Jeremy, if you can step forward. Yeah, let's give it up for Commander Stocko again one more time. So, um, like I said, my name is Jeremy Taylor. I'm the safety and community engagement coordinator at Detroit Shoreway Community Development Organization. Um, I first met Commander Stocko about Two, uh, uh, less than a month into the job, there was a, a, a pretty serious shooting on Franklin um, uh, uh, Avenue, um, and Commander Stocko and uh, a couple of his lieutenants, I believe, came out to a, a community meeting at a resident's house who had caught a bullet, and, and um, you know, a uh, couple months later, um, they caught the guys. And uh, But what Commander Stocko did, I believe, there was, you know, community policing, and um, that definitely, um, you can see that trickling down um, throughout the district. Um, uh, and I want to shout out Sergeant William, uh, Lieutenant Bentley, uh, Detective Murphy as well, Lieutenant Ham, uh, Detective Beveridge, um, Sergeant McLean, and all the community engagement officers uh, that, that, that are in the second district. Um, but tonight, um, on behalf of Councilman Zone's office, um, I want to thank um, and, and uh, recognize Officers Nan and Thompson. Uh, <laughs> These two guys are, 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 are some of the most dedicated, hardworking, um, driven um, officers in the entire city of Cleveland um, has to offer. And I speak for Councilman Zone in the Detroit Shoreway neighborhood um, uh, 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 in uh, expressing our deep, deep gratitude um, to having them serve our community. Thank you, guys. Um, Their presence, in the their presence in the neighborhood is uh, tremendous and their work speaks for itself. Uh, they're compassionate but firm. I'm glad that I know these guys uh, 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 from, from, from the other end. And uh, um, Councilman Sohn def definitely wants to express his uh, gratitude even though he can't be here. And um, I'm honored um, to be here today um, to uh, show our appreciation for you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, and I'd like to echo uh, what, Je what Jeremy said. Um, uh, for those of you that, that don't know uh, Vic and Eric, um, they kind of work uh, out of my office um, handling uh, complaints uh, that come to me. And uh, most of those complaints come to me from, from the council people. Um, this year, I, I said that the, that the council people uh, fought over the vice unit. The council people literally were fighting over who was going to recognize Vic and Eric. Um, uh, they do such a wonderful job, and I'm, I'm deeply in indebted to them and, and grateful for what they do. So, gentlemen, thank you. So, on to the, on to the bigger program. Um, our master of ceremonies this evening is likely a familiar face to most of you. As a TV news reporter and anchorman, Michael Mara became one of Cleveland's premier journalists. Uh, prior to his arrival here, Michael was a reporter, weekend anchorman, and law student in Toledo. Uh, Mike joined the news team at Channel 8 in 1982, before some of our officers were born, uh, and, and finished his legal studies 
um, at night attending John Marshall uh, College of Law, Cleveland State. He became a member of the Ohio Bar Association in 1985, which is when I graduated from high school. Um, I should point out that Mike won uh, the second of his six local Emmy Awards uh, for an eyewitness coverage of the Cleveland Police SWAT team standoff with a gunman inside the lobby of the Channel 8 Studios, and I think uh, Chief Williams may have been part of that SWAT team that was there. Um, when Channel 8 was sold, uh, Mike accepted an offer to practice law full-time in Oakland County, Michigan as a trial attorney and municipal prosecutor. Four years later, he returned home as a reporter and anchor at Channel 19 and 43. He finished out his distinguished career um, in news at Channel 3 and was inducted into the Ohio Broadcasters Hall of Fame. He continues to make guest appearances on the news for Channel 3 as a legal analyst and now works as a crisis consultant with a prominent Cleveland law firm that represents school districts across the state of Ohio. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our master of ceremonies and my dear friend, Michael O'Mara. Why do I suddenly feel like older than everybody here is. That's, that's great. Um, well, it's only fair then. Um, let me just point out that I've known uh, Commander Stocko since 2005, back when he was the public information officer for the police department. I don't know if you remember that part of his career, but uh, it was my job to go over and get the lieutenant to say something beyond the press release. Never happened. I mean, no matter, I, I tried, it was, but anyway, he was, he was tough, but uh, I gotta say, Commander, I'm very proud of the great work you're doing at the Second District, and I am honored to salute all the police officers and the civilians who are being recognized tonight for making our city a better place. And I know my former colleagues in the news business are often too quick to point out any deficiency, anything that's negative, and in a small measure, I'm glad that I'm here tonight to recognize some of the great things that you all have done. So, let me just read off what the honors are tonight. We have the special commendation that's awarded to division personnel who distinguish themselves by improving an administrative or tactical procedure within the division of police, fostering a successful community affairs program, or performing a valuable police service which demonstrates special diligence or perseverance. We also have the commander's commendation and commander's citizen commendation special awards given to law enforcement personnel or citizens, a recognition of an act or acts that represent that officer or citizen's diligence to duty and the furthering of law enforcement ideals. So, when I call your names, if you would do me a favor and come up to my left to your right and get your award, come on down and I'll read about your exploits and then we'll have our dignitaries um, get their photos with you over here on this side. So first, let's all, uh, call up the, the, the Kevins. Patrol Officer Kevin Berrigan, Patrol Officer Kevin Brown. <clears throat> They're both receiving the Commander's Commendation. Back in April 28th, 2019, Patrol Officers Kevin Berrigan and Kevin Brown responded to a burglary in pro process at 3414 Fulton Road. On scene, the officers learned from the victim that earlier in the day, second district officers responded to the same location for a domestic violence incident involving a female resident and her ex-boyfriend. Upon investigating, it was learned that a number of items were taken in the burglary, including the victim's cell phone and house keys. Devising a plan to recover the property, officers Berrigan and Brown advised the victim to call her cell phone, believing the suspect would answer. When he did, the brash criminal attempted to persuade the victim to give him cash in exchange for her own property. Motivated to bring this conniving crook to justice, the officers walked the victim through the use of the Find My iPhone app, which gave the officers the lead they needed, and so they began touring the estimated location identified by the GPS-enabled phone, and within minutes, located the suspect casually walking down the street. Of course, casual didn't last, because upon seeing the officers, the suspect fled on foot through the yards, but was quickly taken into custody. Owing to the wit and resourcefulness of officers Berrigan and Brown, the burglary suspect tracked down, arrested, and brought to justice. You good? All right, next. Patrol Officer George Burke. Patrol Officer David Carpenter, special commendation. Come on down. 
October 11, 2018, Patrol Officer George Burke, Patrol Officer David Carpenter encountered two females who appeared in distress. The women stated they needed help for a girl that had fallen inside an abandoned house. The officers followed the fem females to the abandoned house where they found a girl not breathing and unresponsive. Recognizing this as an overdose, Officer Burke notified radio while running to the zone car for the Narcan kit as Officer Carpenter began life-saving CPR. The girl began labored and sporadic breathing, but was still unresponsive. Undeterred, the officers administered a dose of Narcan that had minimal effect. Another dose of Narcan was administered as Cleveland EMS and fire arrived on the scene and took over first aid. Patrol officers George Burke, Patrol officer David Carpenter located an overdose victim, gave her life-saving first aid, brought professional medical attention to her, and saved her from dying alone in that abandoned house. Next, Mr. Rafael Arroyo Santiago, the Commander's Citizen Commendation. Back on Monday, September 21st, 2019, Rafael Arroyo Santiago walked into the family dollar store over on Clark Avenue where he observed a male wearing a long sleeve shirt over his face while pointing a gun at a store clerk and demanding money. Mr. Arroyo Santiago quickly exited the store, called 911, and then waited in his car. Within seconds, the suspect exited and fled the scene in a nearby car. Determined to assist responding officers and concerned the suspect might escape, Mr. Arroyo Santiago began following the armed felon while relaying the suspect and vehicle description in an updated location together with his direction of travel to the police dispatcher. After Mr. Arroyo Santiago followed the getaway car for several miles, Second district officers converged on the scene and were directed to the fleeing suspect by this brave citizen. Attempting to evade capture, the suspect sped away before crashing into a construction site and fleeing on foot. Responding officers quickly apprehended the running suspect as Mr. Arroyo Santiago looked on. The courageous efforts of Mr. Rafael Arroyo Santiago aided second district officers and directly led to the arrest of a violent career criminal. Next, Patrol Officer Giovanni Santiago, Patrol Officer Charles Leonardi, Patrol Officer Mark Jelinek, Patrol Officer David Negi, Patrol Officer Jose Garcia, and Patrol Officer Bezian Damnori, the Commander's Commendation. May 17, 2019, Patrol Officers Giovanni Santiago, Charles Leonardi, Mark Jelinek, Daniel Negi, Jose Garcia, and Bezian Damnori responded to an assignment of a home invasion that was in progress. Officer Santiago and Leonardi arrived first and advised radio they could see a suspect wearing a mask through the window demanding, give me everything you've got. Officers Jelinek, Nagy, Garcia, Damnori quickly assisted, arrived to assist and coordinate a secure perimeter around the house. Officer Santiago, Jelinek, and Nagy approached the side door of the house as officers Leonardi, Garcia, and Damnori secured the potential escape routes from the house, and then as two people exited the house, a handgun was observed in one of the person's hands. The officers identified themselves. The suspect with the gun attempted to flee. His escape route was quickly cut off by the perimeter securing officers who ordered him to the ground, disarming him in the process. The other person who exited the home was a victim and was escorted to safety. The officers then used loud verbal commands to get the remaining suspect and victim out of the house, which was then secured without further incident. The heroic actions of these officers led to the capture of two armed and violent felons during a volatile home invasion.
Next, we have Patrol Officer Jared Germain, Patrol Officer Ryan Saigan. Commander's commendation. Here they come. On December 5th, 2018, Patrol Officers Jared Germain and Ryan Saigan responded to assist officers searching for multiple suspects. The suspects were fleeing the scene after being interrupted by a homeowner during a burglary in a residential neighborhood. Officer Germain saw a suspect matching the description provided by the homeowner fleeing on foot behind the nearby houses. The officers chased the suspect through numerous backyards and into a wooded ravine. After momentarily losing sight of the suspect, the officers were able to locate the hiding suspect and handcuff him without incident. The homeowner was able to positively identify the suspect as one of the persons that he saw fleeing his residence after the break-in. And thanks to the tenacious pursuit by patrol officers Jared Germain and Ryan Saigan, a felon was removed from the streets and that homeowner was able to sleep just a little bit sounder. Next, we have Patrol Officer Alex Cruz, Patrol Officer Rayshawn Blue, Patrol Officer Scott Carey, Patrol Officer Michael Deegan, Patrol Officer Ryan Souders, and Patrol Officer David Carpenter, all getting the Commander's Commendation. <clears throat> Back on March 3rd, 2019, Patrol Officers Alex Cruz and Rayshawn Blue responded to an assignment for a female that had fallen into the freezing Cuyahoga River. Upon arriving, the officers observed the woman in the water clenching a light preserver and barely able to move as hypothermia was setting in. The officers kept the woman calm as they pulled her to shore and attempted to pull her up the retaining wall and out of the water. At this time, patrol officers David Carpenter, Michael Deegan, Ryan Souders, and Scott Carey arrived and ran to a nearby dock. As a result of her extreme exhaustion and the effects of hypothermia, the woman was unable to maintain a grip on the rope as officers Cruz and Blue tried unsuccessfully to pull her to safety. Recognizing the woman was too weak and cold to assist, the officers changed the plan. Officers Cruz and Blue threw the lifeline to officers Carpenter, Deegan, and Souders with Carey, and they all stood nearby where the woman was pulled then to an accessible area of the dock. The lower dock made it possible for officers Carpenter, Deegan, Souders, and Carey to work together to pull the woman from the water. The officers immediately began first aid as they took her to a waiting EMS squad. That quick, selfless, and coordinated effort of patrol officers Alex Cruz, Rayshawn Blue, David Carpenter, Michael Deegan, Ryan Souders, and Scott Carey saved that woman from certain death. Next, we have Patrol Officer Noel Hernandez, Patrol Officer Dalia Lopez, Patrol, Patrol Officer Mark Jelinek, and Patrol Officer Daniel Negi getting the Commander's Commendation. <laughs> On July 8, 2019, Patrol Officers Noel Hernandez, Dalia Lopez, Mark Jelinek, and Daniel Negi responded to an assignment for a bank robbery in progress. While well, en route, officers Hernandez and Lopez were notified that the suspect fled the bank with stolen bait money containing a live tracking device. While searching for the suspect, officers Hernandez and Lopez were directed by the radio, police radio to a number of locations where the tracking device was alerting. Time after time, however, the officers did not find anyone matching the description given by the bank personnel, but they did notice another male that was present at every scene. Believing the suspect description might be wrong, or that perhaps there was another unidentified suspect, the officers approached the ever-present male and found him to have large wads of cash and the tracking device in his pocket. He was, as you guessed, arrested and taken in for questioning. While the investigation unfolded, officers Jelinek and Nagy spotted the male with a neck tattoo sitting in the car not far from the robbery scene. Upon closer observation, the officers noted that the neck tattoo matched that of the suspect in the bank robbery, so officers Jelinek and Nagy detained the male 
and he was soon positively identified as the robber by eyewitnesses. Owing to intuition, determination, and insight on the parts of patrol officers Hernandez, Lopez, Jelinek, and Negi, two bank robbery suspects were tracked down, identified, and arrested. Patrol Officer Trevor Majid and Patrol Officer Mark Jelinek are both getting the commander's commendation. <laughs> On Friday, September 20th, a male violently attacked a woman stealing a car in her possession. Strapped in the car seat in the rear of the vehicle was her sleeping two-year-old niece. Upon learning of the abduction of the child, the child's mother immediately called 911 and began following the stolen car which was being driven by a violent career criminal recently released from prison. Hearing the broadcast of the crime, patrol officers Trevor Majid and Mark Jelinek began touring the area when they spotted the vehicle driving recklessly at a high rate of speed. Proceeding cautiously but with an obvious sense of urgency, the officers attempted to stop the vehicle and save the innocent child. Before they could catch up the fleeing vehicle, the driver crashed into a bicyclist and a parked car and then ran from the vehicle on foot. Coming out upon the crash car, officers Majid and Jelinek ensured the child was safe before running down and then capturing the driver, who was ultimately indicted for a litany of crimes including murder, aggravated robbery, kidnapping, and felonious assault. The heroic actions of officers Majid and Jelinek led to the capture of this dangerous criminal and the safe return of that child. Lieutenant Patrick Petranek, Commander's Commendation. <laughs> Cleveland Police Dispatch received an emergency call late in the evening of January 30th regarding a large water main break flooding the streets and, st and streaming onto the adjacent interstate. Recognizing the enormity of the situation, 2nd District Lieutenant Patrick Petranek responded to the scene and assumed control of the incident management. Relying on his years of experience, Lieutenant Petranek adeptly organized a multi-agency response to evacuate endangered areas, reroute the traffic, and ensure that the various public service departments responded in a coordinated approach to mitigating a dangerous scene that was made treacherous by the extreme cold. As a result of Lieutenant Petranek's resourcefulness and leadership, the water main break, which could have crippled transportation, commerce, public safety, and public service, was reduced to a mere inconvenience rather than a tragic incident on one of the coldest days of the year. <laughs> Finally, Sergeant Patrick Becca, Detective Robert Norman, Detective Courtney Evans, and Detective Thomas Cloak. <laughs> They're all getting the commander's commendation. During the months of February and March 2019, Sergeant Patrick Becca, Detective Robert Norman, Detective Courtney Evans, and Detective Thomas Cloak investigated a series of violent felonies that occurred the first week of February. The complicated nature of this investigation, investigation cannot be overstated. It included cooperative efforts among multiple local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies together with specialized units within the Cleveland Division of Police. The criminal activity involved both adult and juvenile suspects, shootings, stolen autos, vehicle pursuits, arsons, and multiple crime scene locations. The investigative work included stakeouts on houses and vehicles, processing of evidence, interviews, interrogations, tracking cellular phones, obtaining and executing various warrants, and then sorting through various false crime reports that were generated in an effort to impede the complex investigation. The Herculean efforts of Sergeant Patrick Becca, Detectives Norman, Evans, and Cloak forced a criminal group to cease their violent criminal activity and led to their arrests and ultimate indictments which will result in decades of prison time. Congratulations. I would like to now introduce retired Cleveland Police Officer and current Community Partnership Coordinator for the Cleveland Police Foundation, Bob Goto, for presentation of the Cleveland Police Foundation Awards. Bob?
Thank you. I'd like to introduce uh, a few of our board members who are present tonight to help uh, distribute our awards today. Closest to me is uh, Dick Klupp, Steve Anthony, Marcia Nolan, and Rich Deschamps. Every year, the Cleveland Police Foundation uh, gives out our awards for people who've gone beyond the, the call. An individual, an organization, and a police officer. Would Lee Adams please come forward? <laughs> Lee Adams has been a member of the Second District Community Relations Committee for 25 years. Currently serving her second term as co-chair of the committee, Leah was elected to a two-year term by a unanimous vote of committee members in 2018. Since her election last year, Leah has spent countless hours organizing committee events, lining up volunteers, arranging fundraisers, and marketing the committee in the community. In addition to serving as a second district community relations committee co-chair, Leah is active in and volunteers at first district committee events, Energetic and incapable of refusing a request, Leah is also helping to organize and expand the membership of the 3rd District Committee. As a result of her dedication to community service, Leah has built relationships with a succession of police commanders, Cleveland City Council members, and representatives of the city's community relations. Regardless of the time spent doing volunteer work with the city, Leah sets aside time to crochet baby hats for newborns at Fairview General Hospital. Leah Adams, for your dedication and devotion to the Second District community and the Cleveland Division of Police, the Cleveland Police Foundation bestows upon you its Community Service Award. Would the members of the Guardian Angels please come forward? The Guardian Angels have been and continue to be an integral part of the Second District community. Having spent more than a decade keeping watch over the city of Cleveland, Louis Gonzalez Sr. and the Guardian Angels have worked closely with the officers of the Second District, acting as the eyes and ears of the division, while at the same time serving as force multipliers, peacekeepers, and violence interrupters. interrupters. This devoted and brave group of men, many of whom volunteered their time and resources, to make the very community that they live in better and safer, regularly patrol some of the most challenging neighborhoods of the near west side in response to indications of unrest or threats of violence. Additionally, the Guardian Angels volunteer at many of the same community events that the officers of the 2nd District attend, standing guard alongside our officers to assist with safety and security. For their devotion to peace and safety and their dedication to the 2nd District community and the Cleveland Division of Police, the Cleveland Police Foundation bestows upon the Guardian Angels its Community Service Award. Would Officer Gerson Martinez please come forward? Patrol Officer Gerson Martinez is a 26-year veteran of the Cleveland Division of Police. Despite opportunities for assignments elsewhere within a division, Gerson has chosen to work his entire career in the second district where, with his wife of 28 years, has raised three children. The pious son of a pastor, Gerson is active to this day in the Iglesia de Dios Church that his father shepherded for many years. In addition to his volunteer work with the church, Gerson plays drums three days a week in a church choir. A decorated veteran officer, Gerson was honored with the Distinguished Service Medal for solving a violent robbery involving an elderly female who was attacked by two suspects as she left the bingo hall. His work on that case led to the identification, arrest, and indictment of the suspects. Early in his career, Gerson was chosen out of approximately 200 officers to work in a residential area police program. RAP, as it was known, was an effort to assign officers to specific neighborhoods to work closely with at-risk youths. 
The program would, lay, would help lay the foundation for later community-oriented policing programs. More recently, Gerson volunteered to work with Rainbow's Babies and Children's Hospital on their car seat safety program. In that role, Gerson helps educate the public on infant care seat safety and installation. For the last five years, Gerson has been assigned to the West Side Market beat where, in addition to his security duties, he serves as a goodwill ambassador to the tens of thousands of residents and visitors that yearly flock to this Cleveland landmark. Humble, polite, soft-spoken, and dedicated Patrol Officer Gerson Martinez is the very embodiment of a professional police officer. Officer Gerson Martinez, for your diligence to duty and your dedication to the Second District community and the Cleveland Division of Police, the Cleveland Police Foundation bestows upon you its Community Service Award. Thank you. Thank you, Officer Gutu. I'd like to call Commander Stocko back to the podium for the presentation of the special awards. Commander. Thank you, Mike. So while I get my stuff, is that on? Yep. All right, while I get myself situated, one more round of applause for all of our award recipients. So this is a, a special time of our award ceremony when I get to uh, recognize uh, some of the other folks that really go above and beyond to support our committee. Um, uh, the ceremony that we're having today um, wouldn't be uh, possible uh, without uh, some of our community partners uh, turned benefactors um, of the Second District Community Relations Committee. Um, none are more uh, dedicated, none are more uh, willing to come forward and help our committee um, than uh, Maria Kecken and Neil McCormick from Cinecraft. Um, uh, if uh, Neil and Maria can please step forward. Uh, Cinecraft is, a, is, a, is an anchor business in the, in the Ohio City neighborhood. Um, they've been there for many, many years. Um, uh, every year, uh, as the ceremony is approaching, uh, Maria and uh, Neil uh, contact me and ask me to stop by their business, and, uh, and they offer to help support our, our ceremony. Um, honestly, I, I said it once before, and I'll say it again, uh, the ceremony wouldn't happen if it weren't for uh, uh, these very generous uh, people uh, who, again, have an anchor uh, business right here in the Ohio City community. Um, uh, they are in the... Uh, uh, the, the waning years of their career, in fact, they're stepping back, kind of semi-retired, and uh, they're turning over the reins of their business to their son. So, um, honestly, uh, Maria and Neil, for everything you've done for, for me, for everything you've done for our committee, thank you very much. I just want to say thank you, and even though we're stepping down, we'll still keep contributing because we love you. Thank you. Oh. So, did I break it again? Uh, in addition to uh, Maria and Neil, uh, we've had a number of other benefactors really that, that help our, uh, our committee. Unfortunately, uh, representatives from those businesses couldn't be here, but I did want to uh, talk a little bit about them, at least mention them. Um, uh, again, these businesses and these individuals uh, uh, donate money to our committee every year. So the money that comes into our committee uh, not only supports committee events, uh, but goes right back into the community. Um, those of you that are aware of our committee, um, in a couple weeks here we're going to have our children's Christmas party. It'll be held right here in the, in the gym at Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Um, there, with the help of Skylight Financial, uh, with the help of uh, Nestle Professional, um, with the help of Laird, formerly Laird Technologies, and with the help of Great Lakes Brewing Company, we're able to put on a Christmas party for 200 or so um, youths in our community that otherwise may not have a Christmas. Um, they donate a lot of time, they donate a lot of resources, and most importantly, they donate a lot of money. So um, on behalf of myself um, and our committee and the Second District community, um, again, I'd like to thank uh, the Great Lakes Brewing Company, Laird, Skylight Financial Group, 
Nestle's professional LJ Minor Group. Thank you. So this, uh, this uh, ceremony couldn't have come together without the help of some uh, really important people. Um, these folks uh, spent a lot of time with me, uh, probably got some of my wrath uh, because uh, uh, you know, I, I want things done very specifically and uh, I'm, I'm a little bit of a taskmaster uh, because I want this to really be a special event for, for you folks. Um, uh, these people, again, put in a lot of time um, and really assisted me in pulling the whole ceremony together. Um, I've already mentioned Lieutenant Mike Betley. Uh, you met Lieutenant Johnny Hamm. He's an acting captain uh, in our patrol section. And uh, Carol Hageman, Vanna White, off to my left. All right. And finally, uh, last but not least, um, and I saved this group uh, for last for a reason. Um, as I said, uh, the, the last officers uh, that I mentioned to help us pull this ceremony together are really important, uh, but this next group is critically important. Uh, this next group are our community volunteers, members of our community relations committee, um, the folks really that um, don't get paid to, to do what they do. They volunteer out of a sense of duty. They uh, volunteer out of the goodness of their heart. Um, they spend a lot of their time, they spend a lot of their resources um, to further what we do out in the community. Um, they help me put together this ceremony, uh, the children's Christmas party again. Uh, the money that we got from our benefactors helped, but it wouldn't have happened without the help of, of these individuals. Um, uh, again, they work together uh, to fundraise, they work together to organize community events, uh, conduct community outreach. Um, with the goal of building bridges, really, between our police officers and the community that we serve. Um, they're selfless, they're dedicated, and uh, uh, they're deserving of, of our praise, and uh, I give them my heartfelt thanks for what they've done this year. Um, so I'm going to invite uh, our second district, uh, Community Relations Rep Michael McDonald, uh, to call the individuals forward. We're going to give you uh, an award and, and take a photo to thank you for what you've done. So everyone, thank you. I'd just like to echo everything the commander just said. It's a pleasure to work with these folks. Um, hello? Here we go. No? I guess I need to buy a new microphone. I don't know what's going on there. There we go. Uh, Leah Adams. Leah is our co chair. Jesse and Maria Holland. Here. They're in, our, they're in Peggy Needham. Sandy. Sandy Prince. Nancy Pickering. There you go. Rose Roy. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Bob Shores. So that uh, brings our uh, presentation and our uh, ceremony to a conclusion. Uh, before we go, though, uh, uh, two more things. One, uh, you know, for every uh, award that we've uh, read up here, for every officer that we've recognized, um, there are a dozen uh, back at the district or that are out in the streets right now um, that aren't being recognized. Um, some of the officers uh, in the room right here right now um, did something probably yesterday, last week, or definitely last month um, that would be worthy of an award. Uh, today or at the city's award ceremony. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, sometimes uh, work gets in the way uh, and, and business happens and, and we keep moving on. Um, but to those officers that weren't recognized today, for those officers that did something that they weren't recognized for, um, I want to tell you, thank you for what you did. Um, don't think... Don't think we, we don't recognize what you do day in and day out. Don't think we don't appreciate what you do day in and day out. Um, I can't give you any extra in your paycheck. I can't give you any extra days off. Uh, but what I can give you is my gratitude and my thanks. Uh, to those officers, thank you very much. And now before we eat, uh, we have a wonderful uh, catered meal prepared by Bruno's Ristorante. Um, I mentioned all of our benefactors and people that help out with the ceremony. Uh, Bruno's uh, actually was a, a friend of mine for many, many years going back to our days in Strongsville. And uh, uh, he's a good friend and, and uh, he donates a lot of uh, uh, time and resources to put on a wonderful meal for us. So Bruno, thank you very much. And now I'd like to invite uh, Pastor Grady Steven up, Stevenson up for our benediction. Thank you again, Commander, and to all those who were honored tonight. Thank you so much again. I know you smell all that good food, so we're going to hurry up and bless it. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again for just being in this house with us. We ask, God, that you would bless this food we're about to receive and give our bodies nourishment. If there's any offense, God, we pray that you would remove it. Bless the hands that prepared it, all those that partake. Bless those that have not. And, Lord, allow this food to nourish our body as your word nourishes our souls. This we ask in your son's name. Thank God and amen. amen. All right, that concludes our ceremony, everyone. Thank you. Uh, uh, have a great time tonight, the rest of the night. Um, we're not going to call you up by table, so um, help yourself up there. There's plenty of food. Um, please uh, help yourself and enjoy. Thank you. Thank you.